I didn't realize how much personally I had tied up in this show until I started to think about reviewing it. I started watching it on Showtime when we only had it for a little while. I missed a couple seasons and then got back into it when it got, came on sci-fi. But that was also the time that I was watching it with friends. I'll try not to drone on too much as we go. And it's Thursday, you know what that means? It's time for us to have another Throwback Thursday. And we're gonna go back in time. Throw up that celebration, because heart of the stories we tell, and me, Rob the Host, is going to take us back to a quick nostalgic look and see how a story was that might be a little bit on the older side. So celebrate your week almost being over as we look at... Stargate. Specifically SG-1 for now, but maybe if you liked this video, we'll go back and we'll do the other two shows. I also hear they're doing a reboot. Overall, I want to give it a platinum rating, but I think it only deserves a gold. It's a strong show, it has a strong following, and it even was able to launch two um, sequel series. However, at the end of the day, plus the movies. But at the end of the day, it suffers from a problem that a lot of stories do. When you go too far with things, sometimes the quality starts to slip. So, with that in mind, we're going to take a look at Stargate SG-1. And to do so requires us to take a look at quite a few seasons. So we're going to try to group it all together as much as we can, even though things change up as they go. But you know what, silly me, before we get started... Let me tell you a little bit about what I do here. I take apart stories, try to figure out what makes them tick, why we tell them, how we tell them. I do reviews as stories come up like TV shows and movies, throwback Thursdays like this on Thursday, and theory videos every Sunday. That sounds interesting? Click subscribe and we'll talk about all sorts of stories. Right now I'm just about to give away an Amazon gift card in this Sunday's video. So, it's an Ask Me Anything, I'll link at the end of this video to that so that you can take a look. But Stargate is sci-fi. Stargate is crazy levels of sci-fi, even though they work it in very carefully with ancient alien myths and all sorts of other things. But it's also a military show, to be honest. It's a very military one. Let's throw this up there and get started. So once again, it's stop. Spoiler time. Bah, da, na, na. So the setting, for all intents and purposes, is today. Now, obviously, today was a long time ago because this series started in the 90s. But it's just today. For all the super science and later the magic. For all intents and purposes, everything outside of the SG unit is just normal. All the weirdness, all the crazy happens in the SG teams. And who are the SG teams? Well, that gets us into character. And specifically, we start with four of them. SG-1 is Stargate Command-1. They're the frontline action response team. They're made up of... A Air Force colonel, an Air Force major, an alien that has knowledge of the alien technology, and an Earth scientist who has no business being there. He's just an archaeologist. We start with Jack O'Neill, a tragic and flawed character who's actually extremely bright, but not as knowledgeable in the science areas as the others. He has a tragic past, but that doesn't stop us from rooting for him and even laughing at him. His counterpart is Major Carter. Major Carter is an Air Force computer tech expert who ends up being able to work the alien technology when she gets possessed. And then we have Tilk. Tilk was the main lieutenant of the first big bad guy, until the day the SG teams offered to help him free people, and it has to be one of the most awesome scenes ever put on TV. He literally is standing there about to execute these people, and Jack O'Neill is screaming, I can save these people if you help me. And he says, I've heard that before, but for some reason I believe you. And turns on the others, just because of the pure force of Jack's conviction. And with that, Tilk joins the team. Well, what are, you, what are you doing just sitting there? Well, I don't have any place to go. For this? For this, you could stay at my place. He's both our tough physical combatant and our outside point of view looking in at humanity. Not always done perfectly, but... A very interesting take on a classic sci-fi element. And then we have Daniel. Not a physical fighter like Tilk or even Jack. Not the scientist like Carter. His expert is in languages and, very specifically, archaeology. Basically, he's the historian of the team. And that also makes him the diplomat for some reason. 
other characters come and go, and I could probably spend an hour just going through all of the allies and enemies they make throughout the years. But I think those are the important ones. And we're going to move on to plot. So in a mostly linear fashion, the basic plot of Stargate is there were these ancient gate-building people who were just called the Ancients, and they have this technology so far beyond us, it's not even funny. There were a couple other races that were close. But then another race came along, the Gold, and they were a conquering race. Now, they themselves couldn't stand up to the allies of these Ancients, and they would have gotten their butts kicked by the Ancients themselves. So they entered into these weird agreements with them, and this socio-political stalemate happened. But basically, the bad guys have free reign, and the good guys are afraid to interfere because they have their own problems. So that leaves us, little old humanity, a forgotten corner of the world, the, the multiverse, left to fight an alien threat that's so much more advanced than us it's not even funny. There's a great line in one of the, I want to say season two episodes, they, military people always say that the enemy is at the gate. And Jack looks at him and goes, The barbarians are at the gate! That gate! But let's move on again. Because we're going to talk about point of view. And point of view is easy. The point of view is all the human characters. SGC, SG Command. Now that changes throughout time. We go from one general to another, from one doctor to another. The makeup of SG-1 changes so that the only people who are constant in every version are Tilk and Carter. But at the end of the day, it's the Stargate Command team. What about theme and symbolism? You could write a term paper on it. In fact, Van Doniger did. What if aliens visited us long ago? And what if those aliens were so powerful we thought they were gods? The theme there is powerful... And, of course, the government conspiracy angle handled from a different point of view. Hey, the government's just trying to help. They're the good guys. Is an interesting one. But there's also a make peace, not war theme that runs throughout the whole thing. The fact that there are moments when you realize that diplomacy is the way to go. In fact, I'm going to place Stargate in between the Orville and Star Trek. It wants to be hopeful. It wants to show us the better way that we can evolve, that we can be better. But at the same time, it's right now. It's living with the people and that aren't always the best. So it's somewhere in between those. That's why I gave it such a high rating. But let's talk the good, the bad, and the ugly. And as always, we're starting out with the good. The good is the, the actors and the set quality, and even the special effects quality are so beautiful. It's good enough to get you to laugh, cry, and just feel. The other thing it did great was it really encompassed the whole idea of ancient aliens, the idea that this warrior race known as the Asgard could be aliens long before the MCU tried to crack it. And it even showed the foils of, hey, you know, trying to back-engineer alien tech, trying to play around, that could be some dangerous stuff. One of the episodes even had a very realistic argument where one of our alien allies said, so what, you just capture an alien craft? slap a U.S. Air Force sticker on it and think it's yours? You didn't think that was going to cause a problem? And its jokes were awesome. The Groundhog Day hysterical. Another one with that alien craft, the same alien craft, was they were about to make a trench run with it. And they called out his call sign, and Jack was like, I thought we were going with Rogue Leader on this one. What about the bad? Well, everything's got bad. Through multiple almost cancellations to actors having to retire or just leave the show for whatever reason, the makeup of SG-1 kept changing at the end. And I have to say, one of the things that I think was bad about that was they didn't always have a clear idea of where they were going with the next evolution. They were kind of, like, making it up as they went. And then the ugly. And before I go too much into the ugly, I cannot stress enough how much I love this show, how much I gave it a gold rating, and how much I think that this is so amazingly ahead of its time. But having said that, the last couple of seasons had some real problems, where they changed up the formula and they broke their own theme. One of the things that happened is, from the beginning, they were arguing, we're going after false gods. 
but starting with the Anubis Ark and then even worse with the Ori. You have not false gods, but evil gods. And they kept calling them false gods. And I'm like, no, no, no. When you have something that can create life, when you have something that much more powerful than you, I think the Ori and the, they're pretty much gods. I think that the two spinoffs have equal parts, good and bad, each one creating a new take on their own formula. If you're interested in hearing about those, let me know down in the comments below, because I really want to hear what you think about Stargate and the Stargate universe and the idea that maybe they might be rebooting it. And like I said up top, Amazon gift giveaway. On top of that, it's an Ask Me Anything week, so ask me a question and I'll answer in this week's video on Sunday. But for now, give me a thumbs up and help me share this video. Let's get it out there to all the Stargate fans. And subscribe. Join our little community. Maybe you'll win the gift card. But even if you don't, join. Talk to us about geeky stuff. Let's let's talk about how awesome the Ori are compared to the Gold Ruled and vice versa. Let's talk about Zap guns disintegrating on the second hit and then, you know, bringing the bodies back on the third. Because that's what the TV show will be. So. Whatever you do, just join and let's talk it all out as we walk through the heart of the stories we tell. Have a good day.